Okay, let's keep going. So, today, we are going to talk about elasticities. Elasticities are very, you know, very interesting and very eye-opening chapter for you, Rob. It's very eye-opening and very interesting chapter. Why? <clears throat> Please recall demand of law. Law of demand. Yeah. Law of demand or demand law mentions that if price go down, if price go down, quantity of a good demanded should go up. So think about this one. Salt. Price of salt go down. And you go to your family, say that, in the university they taught us that, if price of salt go down, we should buy more. Put more salt to foods. <laughs> so most probably, they will say you that, where did you learn this information? You said that we uh, learned it in microeconomics, and they will come, and they will raise your enrollment from the university and take you away. Okay? So, why, why so? Because demand of law says that if price go down, quant of a good demand it will go up. But it doesn't say us how much it will go up. Okay? It doesn't say us how much it will go up. For example, when you think about salt, price of, price of salt will go down. But quantity of a salt demanded will not go up too much. Why? Because the responsiveness or the, you know, when the price go up, go down, quantity of a good demanded uh, go down, how much part of it, it is very important. Okay? I mean just, when the price of good will go down, up, quantity of a good demanded will go down. It definitely will, will happen like that. But how much part? How much it will go down? It's really very interesting question. Why? Because it's very helpful. It can, you know, if you have, a, if you have your own business, it will let you, you know, make proper, reasonable, plausible decisions. So in this case, this how much question will take us to elasticity. Also, think about other reasons. Once upon a time, price in the metro transportation was 0 0.05 Azerbaijan Manas. Okay? So then what happened? It goes to 1.15. Demand of law says us that if price go up, quantity of a good demanded will go down. So what about metro? Do you think that it's gone down? Maybe just a little. Maybe just a little. For example, if, if there is a uh, think that when the price is uh, 0 0.05, the people who have a transportation, who took metro, it was 1 million. And right now, maybe it is uh, 000, 000. that much. You understand my point? 999,000. That much. Why? Because still people go on, you know, uh, use metro as a uh, main transportation. So, I think it's up to a difference uh, on CapEx uh, doesn't make any sense for people. So Maybe they will uh, price uh, will go up uh, with uh, 50 CapEx, then uh, there will be decrease in uh, quantity. Of yeah. So. Yeah, it's still cheaper than bus. But also, but also, imagine that Metro is a private company. And you are the head of metro, you know, uh, 
this enterprise. You think that if I increase the prices, demand will not go down too much. So if I have a chance to, you know, uh, transport people with this fare, so why should I choose this one? If you are a business owner, if you are owner of the company, then what you are going to do? You will increase prices. Why? Because elasticity gives you very crucial information. And as you know, the elasticity about the metro demand and metro price, you definitely know that. If price go up, quantity of a good demanded will not go down too much. So, please multiply these numbers. How much money, uh, so some people don't prefer metro anyway. Do you think that the money as a business owner, as a money you make, it will go down or it will go up? Definitely will go up. So it means that if you could, you know, determine, measure the elasticity, measure of elasticity, if you could have a detailed information, if you have a, you know, just a, a wide information, broad information about elasticity, you could easily make proper decisions. If you are a business owner and, you know, uh, if you are running an uh, organization, private on organization, you could easily use elasticities to make choices, I mean, to, to make decisions. And the decisions will lead you to the way that you could make more money. Also, also, for example, think about salt. If you sell salt, if you have a company, you produce and sell salt, you definitely know that. If you increase salt prices too much, yeah, you will lose a lot of money. Also, if you are a, you know, owner of the metro co corporation, you know that if you increase metro prices too much, then what will happen? Quantity of uh, metro transportation demanded will go down too much. So you will calculate it. You will say that no, it's very reasonable number. But make it, for example, 50, 0 0.50, it's not reasonable. M make it one monad is not reasonable. Okay? So elasticities will help us to make calculations and to draw results, proper results, about, you know, these issues and the details of these issues. Let's see what we have on the slides. So it says that, Ceteris Paribus, uh, that how much does we mentioned about this? And, yeah, it says that this is what the price elasticity of demand is designed to answer. So first, they say that uh, it's very important how much does quantity demand change. I mean, it goes up or down. It's a very crucial question. But if you want to uh, answer this question, you have a tool right now. And the tool of, uh, name of this tool, Ralph's colleague, Price elasticity of demand. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go. So, if, we, if you want to find out, if you want to find out the price elasticity of demand, how you will find out this one? Yeah, you will, you know, just the uh, percentage change in quantity demand divided by the percentage change in price. It's our, you know, main formula. And this formula will let us, will let us, you know, calculate the exact number. So, let's make, uh, make it a little bit uh, numerical. Where's my, uh, just, okay, it's there. So, for example, you know that if price of a good go up, quantity of a good demanded will go down. Let's apply it there. Let's say that, you know, there is 10% change in the price and let's say that uh, there is 40% change in quantity demand. Let's put that way. Price go up 10%, quantity of a good demand go down 40%. So, you are going to have a price elasticity of demand 4 
What does it mean? Yeah, right now we have a we have a numerical example. I mean, right now we have a numerical example, and this uh, numerical example simply says us that if if you increase prices one person, or if prices go up with any reason one person, then quantity of a good demanded will go down four person. I mean, on previous chapter, on previous chapters, you know that if price go up, quant demand of a good will go down. But right now, you have a tool to measure it. And it simply says, right now, you, you know how much it. You say that if price of a good goes, goes up 1%, then quant of a good demanded definitely will go down. But how much? 4%. Also, the vice versa is veiled. It says that if the quantity of a good, uh, I mean, if the price of a good goes down one person, quantity of a good demanded, exactly, goes up four person. So, for example, you want to know that um, let's simply say that you want to the quantity of a good demanded go go up eighty percent. You want to that quantity of a good demanded to go up 80%. What, what, you, are, what you should do, please? Decrease price 20%. Exactly. So what, what you are going to do? You will decrease price 20%. So you take it as a measure, so you can easily draw conclusion for variations in these numbers. It's clear enough? Yeah. Okay. So, let's have some oxygen. Um, if this part is, uh, this part is okay, right, Elgin? Okay. So, the other issue is that, other issue is that, when the goods price go up, it is positive number. When the quant of a good demand go down, it is negative number. When the goods price go down, it is negative number. When the quantity of a good demand go up, it is positive number. Negative number divided by positive equals negative. Positive number divided by negative. So, because of this reason, price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of demand, always will have negative sign. Because of this reason, price elasticity of demand... Just a second. Because of this reason, price elasticity of demand, I mean, coefficient of price elasticity of demand, will always have negative sign. But when you make interpretation, and, but when you make comment on it, you will took, you will took absolute number. Thank you very much. You will take absolute number. So, for example, in this, uh, you know, uh, calculation, we don't use the negative. We don't say that it, it goes, so the meaning is negative, of course, because it's go down. But when you took and when you make interpretation, you use the absolute number. Okay? So because of this reason, because of this reason, every time you calculate, because of this reason, every time you calculate price elasticity of demand, the sign of result always will be negative. But when you make interpretation, when you comment on it, you will took absolute number. Why sign is why sign is always always negative? Why sign is always negative? So change in price and quantity is always uh, opposite. Yeah, positive inverse or there is a negative relationship. There is a negative relationship between change in price and change in quantity demanded. Quantity demanded. 
Okay? So because of this reason, we think that there will be, you know, uh, we will comment on the uh, post number, but the results always will come out as a, you know, negative. Uh, so, the other issue is that, you know, other issue is that, Price elasticity of demand. Is it elastic or it is inelastic? It's very important. So, if the result, if the coefficient is bigger than 1, we will call it elastic. If it is less than one, we will call it inelastic. So it's just a mathematical issue. It's just a mathematical issue. So for example, let's say that price go down, price go down, 5%, quantity of a good demanded go up, 30%. What will be the result? Yeah, six. So what does it mean? It simply means that it simply means that quantity of a good demanded is very responsive to the price changes. Quantity of a good demanded is very responsive to price changes. It simply means that. When you decrease prices, quantity of a good demanded go up too much. Also, when you increase prices, quantity of a good go down too much also. Okay? So let's say that this, uh, yeah, it's minus plus, and you will took the absolute number, and it will come out 6. So it simply means that if price go up 1%, quantity of a good demanded will go down 6%. If price go down one per, uh, go up one person, quant of a good demanded will go down six person. Okay, so we say that <coughs> change in quant demanded is very responsive to change in price. So we will call it there is a elastic demand. We call it there is elastic demand. <coughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we could use no problem. Elastic goods and elastic goods. So let's keep going and let's say that there is 5% decrease in the goods price and 4% four person, four person in quantity of a good demand. So, yeah. and it's less than one, we will call it inelastic. So it means that price go up one person, but quantity of a good demand go down less than one person. Price go up one person, but quantity of a good goes up less than one person. Okay? It's just mathematical issue, no problem. So because of this reason, we say that in this case, we have inelastic demand. But in this case, we have elastic demand. Okay? It's very helpful and, you know, very... And what about the one? If, if it comes one? Yeah, we will call it unit elastic demand. If the result is one, if price elasticity of demand equals one, we will call it unit elastic demand, okay? Unit elastic demand. If it comes out... So, it means that, for example, if price go up 5%, quant of a good demand that will go down 5%. So, price go down 5%, quant of a good demand will go up 5%, okay? So, with the same expression. With the same amount, magnitude. So, please, it, it shows us, it shows us the, this relationship and, for example, in this case, price go up 10%, but quantity of a good demand go down 
20 verse. So, shape of demand curve gives us very crucial information about the price elasticity of demand. Again, shape of demand curve gives us very crucial information about the price elasticity of demand. So let me show you these ones. Price, quantity, demand curve. Price, quantity, demand curve. Price, quantity, and let's say that this like that. Which one has highest? Uh, I mean, which one is more elastic? So if you, if you, I mean, just if you compare them, if you uh, make ranking among them, which one will come on the uh, elasticity first? Yeah. Second one. Okay, second one, and this one, third one. So, to give further explanation, it's simply how, how your colleagues draw this conclusion, we will explain this. Please look at this one. Price go up just a little, quant of a good demand go down with huge amount. Price go down with small amount, small magnitude maybe, quant of a good demand go up with, yeah. So again, in this case, for example, you see that price go up, quant demand go, go down, but not that much big. The magnitude of quant of a good demand go down, not that much big. Also, price go down, and, you know, quant of a good demand go down. But please look at this one. As it is steeper, as it is steeper, Quant of a good, uh, I mean, price of a good goes up too much, but quant of a good demand just go down a little bit. And also, this one. Uh, yeah, like that. So, if your demand curve gets flatter, demand tend to be more elastic. Thank you very much. But if your Demand curve gets steeper. Yeah, it means that your uh, demand is tend to be more uh, more inelastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just uh, yeah yeah. So yeah 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 third one. It's it's like the third one. It's like the third one. So it's just a little bit. Uh, you know, when you look at this one, it, it's kind of uni unit elastic, right? Yeah, it's uh, almost, almost like that. Excuse me? Yeah, it is, uh, it, the, it's, uh, we, we call it infinite. I mean, uh, perfectly elastic, but unfortunately we don't have it in the real life. So just we show it as a mathematical issue, okay? For example, it says you that if price go up just one person or a, Tiny. If price go up a little bit, what's going to happen to the uh, yeah demand will be, will be zero. Okay. So as uh, as long as we don't have a application for this demand curve, but we see it as a mathematical issue because it could happen. It's just a graph. It could be like that or like that. But we will give examples about other ones from the real life. I think you know it will be more interesting for you. So, <clears throat> so it, it simply means that if demand curve shape gets flatter, it's going to be more elastic. But it gets steeper, it means that it's going to be, you know, uh, more inelastic. Yeah, perfectly. And it is inelastic demand. Why it is inelastic demand? It's very easy to see. When the yeah, price go up just ten percent, quant of a good demanded go down five percent. 
So there is a 10% change in and 5% change in quantity of a good demand. So result will be 0.5. It's really very crucial information. If you are selling something, it's very, you know, easy to know that. So, for example, think about bread. If you think about bread in Azerbaijan, what you will say about this one? What about the bread? Bread, uh, you know, uh, demand in Azerbaijan? Inelastic. Inelastic. Why? Yeah, of course. Of course. We, we, like, we like bread too much, so we cannot, you know, uh, we can't do without bread. So, price go up, but we still keep going to eat this one. No, no, no. You could go to the real life and you could calculate this. Uh, for example, on the uh, coming slides, we will give example that they are going and they, they make these calculations and they found out the result for this one. So uh, you can go and you can make these calculations. But uh, we just want to show you the, for example, in salt example. Salt is very, it's a very bare example. When the price of salt go, uh, goes down, you don't put more salt to, the, to your foods. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, how can we define, uh, I mean, calculate a change in price and quantity in all markets? So, uh, if you go to the real life, of course you will, I mean, you will improve very complicated models. For example, let's say that in the uh, fourth year, in the fourth year, you are going to have an econometrics class. In this econometrics class, we are going to give you these the details of how you could do that. But right now, just learn and just know that if you make this calculation, you could get the result. But how we do that in real life, of course, it really requires a, a time-consuming, very painful, and data collecting, and so on, so on. So you do all of them, you bring, uh, maybe it will take you two years, maybe three years, so... Yeah, first you, you will learn statistics, then you will learn econometrics, then you will be available to do these things. Okay, just be passionate. I know that you are very excited, you want to learn more and more, and, but we, you have still time. So what about this one? Have you ever, you know, uh, heard about this one? Yeah, perfect. It says that inelastic demand, what you could say about this one? So, well, well, what's, the, what's the meaning of it? What does it mean? Yeah. Price go down, price go up. It doesn't matter. Do we have this kind of goods in the real life? Exactly. You want to give an example? Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, people uh, cannot live without insulin, and uh, if price of insulin goes up, and the demand of insulin You you mean the people who has diabetes, right? Yes, sir. So, people who has diabetes, I think they should uh, use insulin three times a day, or yes. yeah. For example, they have to use it. Otherwise, it will be very harmful and very damageful for them. So, when the price of you know. Uh, price, quantity, and a demand curve. Price of insulin, just one month, they are going to, you know, uh, spend, I mean, just uh, buy it three times in a day. It goes five months, they will still do the same. And if it goes, for example, uh, ten months, they do the same. Why? Because you, also you can, you can apply this idea to our other medical issues. Okay? So because if you have a if you, somebody have a very uh, serious health problem, and they, if they have to take these medicines, and if there is no other way, what's going to happen? They have to do it. Yeah, they, they have to buy it. 
So because of this reason, in the medical issues, you, you know, you have to buy it. And when you have to buy it, it simply means that regardless of the price change, regardless of the price, you are going to buy it. So, it brings us to the Rauf. It brings us to the perfectly inelastic demand. So, it simply means that whatever the price is, uh, quantum of a good demanded will not go up or down. And if there is a perfectly inelastic demand, coefficient of uh, price elasticity of demand will equal to zero. Thank you very much. It's going to equal to zero. And it's mathematical issue. For example, in the price go up 20%, quantity of a good demand go down or go up 0%. So, zero divided by 20 equals zero. Okay. What else? Yeah, it's a unit elastic demand. We explain this. And 10% increase, 10% decrease, like that. Yeah. Yeah, it says, as we said, if it's relatively steep, it's going to have a, you know, relatively low, uh, I mean, more inelastic. But if it's relatively flat, it's going to be more elastic, of course, more elastic. Or demand is, elasticity of demand is relatively high, so you can easily draw this conclusion. Okay. So, uh, we are going to, you know, I will give you a formula that you don't have it on your uh, textbook. So you can, you can write it down and you can use this. So, please recall that, please recall that, I told you, I told you that, you took the percentage increase in the, I mean, percentage change in quantity of a good demanded, divided by percentage change in price, okay? So, if you want to, if you want to calculate, if you want to calculate, excuse me, yeah, yeah, we, we will do that. We will do that. No problem. So, if we, if we, you know, just, uh, if you want to do that, if you want to explain that, so, we will, in the midpoint method, excuse me, is there a reason? Yeah, yeah mid, midpoint method. So, how you find midpoint? You took the average. Okay, you took the average. Uh, so, midpoint means that, you know, you find the average. So, how you will find the average? You will took the Let's say that this uh, Q sub 0, Q sub 1, divided by 2. So you are going to find midpoint. Also in the price, P sub 1, divided by P sub 0, uh, minus uh, P sub 0, divided by 2, we are going to have a midpoint there also. Okay? So, in your textbook, it's written like that. Yeah. Uh, it says... It says average, okay? Average and average. Change in quantity, change in average, and change in price, change in average. Okay? So, please write down an example. Then uh, I think we are going to have a break time and we will come back and we will calculate this, okay? We are writing. Write down, please. When the price is, when the price is, when the price is, when the price is 20, 20, quantity of a good demanded, Quantity of a good demanded equals 
300. Uh, 20, right? Okay, 20. Price go up 25. Price go up 25. Price go up 25. And quantity of a good demanded? No, no, no. It's just the numbers. It's just numbers. It's not the percentage. It's the numbers. Yeah, quantity of a good demanded go down to 150. 150. 150. Okay. Use midpoint method and calculate the price elasticity of demand. Okay? I will see you after break time.